Home Affairs Minister Dr. Aaron Mutsoledi has denied claims that the department's six-month extension of the Zimbabwe exemption permit is meant to appease neighboring Zimbabwe's ruling ZANU-PF ahead of elections next year. The Helen Sussman Foundation says there is speculation that the six-month extension is to allow ZANU to introduce, quote, murderous policies until after the next elections in the country in April of next year, as I was saying. The foundation is now vowed to continue to fight along with its legal team opposed to government's basic aim basically to bring an end to that Zimbabwe exemption permit scheme. Let's talk about this with the Home Affairs Minister, Dr. Aaron Mutsoledi himself. A very good afternoon uh, to you, Minister. Thank you so much for your time today. Why have you felt the need to respond in the way that you've done to the foundation this time round? Good day, Tembekile. Good day to the listeners and viewers there. Can you repeat the question? Why did I want... My question was... Why have you felt it's so important to respond uh, to the comments made by the Helen Sussman Foundation, especially because I think it's been nine days or so since they were made? Yeah, I was out in the rural areas uh, with the mobile units, so I had no time. But basically, I've always had an intention to respond, especially for two reasons, uh, Tembeki. The first one, which I found extremely ridiculous, uh, this conspiracy you know, what I'm doing stop Zimbabweans from going to vote in the election. It's a very funny one, Tembeki. Most of the time, Helen Zussman Foundation accused me of trying to chase Zimbabweans away. Now they are accusing me for keeping them in South Africa so that they don't go to vote. I, I found this very, very ridiculous. And that's why I'm giving them a public challenge that they must make use of their massive resources to mobilize all Zimbabweans to participate in the elections in their country because it is an obligation, a democratic obligation of every citizen of every country to participate in the elections of their country so that they direct events and, 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 and the final results of, the, of whatever direction their country is taking. So the foundation in its statement, um, it must be said, does not take ownership of what even it says is speculation that what the South African government is doing is allowing the six-month extension basically so that ZANU can achieve its objectives by April next year. Given that the foundation itself says this is speculation, serious an allegation though to make against the government of any country, what sort of action are you considering taking? Will you pursue an apology or anything else? No, I've given them a challenge. I'm not going to do anything else. I've given them that challenge. If they truly believe that's what we are doing, they must do the opposite and put their money where their mouth is. They must mobilize Zimbabweans to make sure that they participate in the election. That's the least uh, uh, they can actually do. That they say this is speculation, Tembegile. The fact that they put it in their statement, it means they believe it. They believe that this could be the case, and this is what we are doing. That's why they put it in their statement, and I give them responsibility, because this is their statement. You can't just say it's speculation without mentioning who speculated that. So, because then you can accuse many people on the basis of a speculation and put it in the public domain. To members of the public, they don't read that word speculation. They read that the Minister of Home Affairs is making news of legislation and processes in home affairs to make sure that certain Zimbabweans don't participate. I'm virtually accused of interfering in electoral process of an, I mean electoral process of a neighboring country. But I'm not taking any legal action. I'm just challenging them to make good what they are saying by mobilizing people to go and vote it's and see if it will stop them from doing so. There's been uh, the legal challenge, yes, we know the Helen Sussman Foundation is opposed to the scrapping of the Zimbabwe exemption permits. So that is playing out in court, right? But there's also been um, the back and forth outside of court. Is it not time for government and the foundation to, at this point, just stop the sideshows and wait for a, a court to pronounce on this issue? Because given the level of emotion, firstly, around the subject itself and the uncertainty for some people, especially um, Zimbabwe nationals who are hoping to be able to stay in South Africa beyond the six-month extension. It adds, doesn't it, to the anxiety of the moment, and it, it's perhaps best left, I don't know if you'd agree, to just the courts finalizing where we should go. 
Indeed, indeed, Tembegile. That's why in my statement I said I was not going to respond because the matter is in court. But I'm forced by the ridiculousness of this conspiracy theory. Also, the distortion that the extension was issued in order to, to run away from the court case or with the hope that the court case will go away. That's why in their statement they emphasize that the court case is going on. I, I found that obje objectionable on the basis that when I issued this extension, I issued three documents to make it. Firstly, a legal directive about the extension, but secondly, on the same day, a media statement explaining my action in detail, and three days later, I issued a government gazette to that effect. Now, for somebody to come and say, ignore all the facts I've given, and by the way, those facts, we've even sent them to their lawyers. Mm -hmm. Now, to come and issue a media statement and say, no, the minister was hoping the case would go away, we are going on with the case. It's, it's propaganda. In other words, it's an aerial battle, which I agree with you is not necessary because the matter is in court already. Right. And the elections in Zimbabwe are coming up in under a year. I'm asking you about them because it's an issue that's now come up. Do you as Home Affairs worry that the outcome of that election may drive a further surge of movement of Zimbabwe nationals into South Africa legally or illegally after April next year? Well, look, the outcome of the elections and what it means, we leave them to Zimbabweans. On our side, we will apply the laws and processes as we deem fit. I don't think it will be appropriate for me to comment about the upcome, outcome of elections in Zimbabwe, that if it goes this way, this is how it will affect us. Let's leave it to Zimbabweans. They've got the right to decide the direction of their democracy without being dictated to by any neighbor. And how is the, the process overall going? Because um, at the moment, we've spoken about it, as I said, quite a lot. People were saying initially when the ZDP process started in terms of applying for the new appropriate documentation, that there were problems. Where do things stand now? Well, as I said, I've put up a team of very highly experienced people headed by the former Director General in the President, Dr. Cassius Lubisi, who have already, by the way, took a report to Parliament after I've commissioned them to review permits and visas which were issued uh, from 2004, not the ZEP. But from that experience, I realized that they know what they are doing. I put them as a team to come and review uh, and, and receive this uh, application from Zimbabweans the waivers and, the, and the, the, the visa applications. Now, that team is the one that met for a long time, and on the 2nd of September, they met for the whole week. They are the ones who advised me to, 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 to extend, because they said they've set up the timetable of their work, and they realized that they won't finish the, the work uh, by December. So they are busy. They are meeting almost every day, or maybe at least three or four times a week, to try and process this, and uh, very soon will be coming out to show the extent of the work they've done. Home Affairs Minister, Dr. Aaron Mozzoledi, thank you for your time, sir.